This is really a working press room. They have deadlines uh, to uh, fill. So I would appreciate those of you who are not part of the media to please make your chairs available for the media members. Thank you very much. Um, it was an interesting night. I think we saw a little bit of everything. Uh, some great fights. Uh, Pauli Malinaji uh, sizzled the, the stadium, the venue again with his speed, his combinations. Uh, it was an exciting, thrilling performance. Uh, clearly a man to reckon with at the 147 pound weight class and I think he is uh, uh, ready uh, to, uh, uh, to go and take on anyone at 147. I know it's not, it's not because of him. Uh, it's some of these other guys who don't want to fight him uh, because I know he is ready to take on just about anyone or anyone and uh, we are going to do whatever we can to get Paulie that uh, world championship, uh, that world title shot uh, sometime next year. So uh, please uh, um, give a warm applause to Paulie Malinaji. What's up guys? Yeah, it seemed like an eventful fight. Uh, I, I think uh, I gotta learn to start a little faster. Uh, it seems like in my last couple of fights, I gotta get hit in order to get into my groove, and, uh, and it's something like I want to start cutting out, man. I, got, I, I felt like I don't know. Maybe I, I didn't realize I was in a fight until I took that right hand, or was it even a hook? I don't even know what I got hit with in the first round, but it bust me a little bit. And uh, you know, after that, I, I realized, all right, let me stay smart and, and get this thing together. And uh, that's what I did the rest of the fight, as you guys saw. Um, yeah, like uh, like Schaefer, Mr. Schaefer said, uh, I'm I'm ready for uh, a big fight. Uh, you know, I'm so glad and so appreciative that uh, Golden Boy not only brought me back the way they did, um, they did it on TV. They, they did it uh, so that the world could see my fights, so that the uh, the memory of the Khan fight won't be the last time people would have seen me, and, well, and I'd be winning off TV. You know, so I, I can't express my gratitude in words that um, you know Golden Boy Promotions and the way they they brought me back along. And uh, you know, in a way where everyone can see my performances and judge for themselves uh, where I'm at uh, in, in my career, and if I've still got it, I, I feel like I still got a lot to give, and uh, I feel like I'm ready, uh, like Mr. Schaefer said, like for anybody at 147 pounds in the world. You know, um, I was talking to my team as well, and if the opportunity for a big enough fight presents itself, even back at 140, I think uh, with the heat training in California, I may be able to get back to 140. So I, I want to keep my options open. Uh, I know uh, we're talking about a welterweight tournament. I'd love to be in, involved in something like that. Um, I know Devin Alexander's been mentioned. Um, a few other fights have been mentioned for me at welterweight. Uh, everything interests me. I, I, I love big fights. I love being part of big events. And um, you know, you guys know me, man. I'm a ham for the for the for the attention. But um, but uh, you know, even if something comes up at 140, I would uh, I will keep my eyes open for that as well. And. Uh, We'll see. On to the next. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Another man, I think, who had uh, all of America cheering for him and who uh, yeah. came through with flying colors. Uh, I have to admit, I was a bit worried there in the first round, but I guess he was just warming up and uh, then he let his hands and punches fly. Uh, and I know that we all cheered there for him and were with him. That is Dewey Bozella. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dewey. One and all, they will retire with one and all. Undefeated, the undefeated Dewey Bozella. Hello. Uh, um, I'm honored to be here tonight. First, I want to give, give praise to God and uh, to let everybody know that, you know, that was my first and my last fight. Um, I just wanted to know how it felt like to be a pro. Yep. And it felt real strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, I think that one of the most uh, difficult things that people may understand about boxing is the discipline, the moral obligation, and responsibility it takes to be a pro. I'm 52 years old, you know. I, this is a young man's sport. You know, and thank you. And, and to have the thank you, and to have the honor of Oscar De La Hoya, Bernard Hopkins for giving me a chance at his camp with Danny or uh, Davis and Ricky, you know, and Moses and them. That was that was the blessing in disguise by itself. I think that I would like for everybody to know that you know my thing is to uh, give back. 
Um, for those who do not know, I was locked up for 26 and a half years for a crime I did not commit. And I felt as though my career was taken from me when I was a kid up in Floyd Pass in boxing camp. And I strongly felt that I had a chance to win a title um, somewhere along the line because there's so many different divisions out there. And so just to have this opportunity to face the world and to be able to fight was a gift. You know, it was done through this, his promotion, which I bet I want to say thank you, you know. The other, the other thing I would like for y'all to know is that in Chicago, there was something that was done for me that was special that a lot of people don't know. And it was done through Paul Maggiani. He dedicated a fight to me that people don't know anything about. And I wish they would have showed that clipping because the man has a good heart that a lot of people don't know anything about. You know, and they just look at him like, you know, he always doing his own little thing because he's from Brooklyn and he talks a lot. But the man has a beautiful heart. <laughs> You know, and I want y'all to know that. Um, and there's a few other people that did a lot of things for me. But I would like for you to truly understand that I'm about trying to get back to the kids. I got a Dewey Bozella Foundation, and um, that's what it's about, man. It's about trying to save someone's kid, man, from making the mistakes that I made, thinking that hanging out in the streets and hanging out with the wrong people, you know, is going to help you out. Nah, it's not about that. It's about trying to get back and let them know, man, that life is precious, very, 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 very precious. And they, everybody deserves a chance. It doesn't matter what nationality or where they come from. You know, and that's my thing. So I would like to thank y'all very, very much. And I, you know, want you to know, man, God bless you all. Thank you very much, Dewey. Um, I just want to say a few words uh, about Dewey Bazella, uh, of how he uh, inspired not, not just people here, but everyone who watched this story. You, you truly are an inspiration to, to a lot of people. You're an inspiration to the President of the United States of America who called him, uh, wishing him luck. Uh, and he was actually watching the fight. So we, uh, we are very proud of Dewey and uh, whatever we can do uh, with your foundation and Golden Boy Promotions, we are 100% uh, behind you. So uh, Dewey once again showed the world uh, that you can never, ever, ever give up. No matter what you're doing, where you come from, what language you speak, uh, if you set your mind to something, everything and anything is possible. So that, thank you very much for inspiring myself and inspiring all of us. Thank you very much, Dude. Um, Jorge Linares uh, is not going to be here. Uh, and nor is Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins uh, went to the hospital uh, to get his shoulder checked out. But I just want to make the following comment, and then I'm going to pass it on to um, to Gary Shaw. As it relates to Jorge Linares, I think he was fighting from I don't know the fourth, fifth round on with a, a really bad cut, bad cuts, a very bloody face. He was clearly in the fight. In fact, on the official scorecards, he was ahead eight two and nine three. Um, so he was in the fight uh, all the time, he was punching back, uh, he was clearly uh, 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 in the fight and therefore we are going to file a protest on behalf of Jorge Linares and Golden Boy that was a premature stoppage and uh, we are not going to stand for that. Um, I think it was a poor refereeing job here in California all along uh, tonight. Uh, I really am not impressed at all and we do a lot of shows here and I'm not afraid to say that. but. Um, this, is, this was horrendous, uh, as was the Hopkins uh, situation. I'm not going to get into details now. Our attorneys are working on a uh, complaint with the California Athletic Commission, We're taking this very serious. Chad Dawson is not the champion. I have already been talking to Jose Suleiman, and uh, this, is, this is not the way. Um, we, are not gonna, we are not going to accept that, and that's all I'm going to say at this point. Thank you. <laughs> Man, I've heard sore losers in my time, and I like Richard a lot. Before, before, let me hand you this trophy. Thank you. Before you say anything, let me hand you this trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great work.
This trophy will stay in someone's house in L.A. I can't afford to fly it home. Close fight. Um, I take my hat off to the guard team of Garcia. They came to fight. They was ready. Um, they out hustled me a little bit. Uh, I, was, I was out there looking to knock his head off. And I, I, I guess you know, I went out there and you know, I was looking for that for too long. And uh, you know, that, was, that was the... Uh, that was the, that was, I guess that was my downfall. I should have stuck to the game plan that um, Buddy had laid out for me. You know, should have pressed a little bit more, threw a little jabs, you know, mix it up a little bit more. But, you know, I felt I felt in my heart that I could have got this guy out of there. And uh, that's what I was waiting for. I thank you all very much. Have a great night. We thank you for coming out, coming to the press conference. I appreciate it very much. Bueno, no tengo palabras. Primero que nada, muchas gracias a todos los aquí presentes. On a serious note, I want to say something to all you men out there. You know, this is Breast uh, Cancer Month. If you notice, some of the fighters fought in pink gloves, and we had pink cushions and whatever. But I want to say something to all the men out there. I am a cancer survivor. Prostate cancer kills hundreds of thousands of people. You don't have to die because of, of prostate cancer. It's a simple blood test. It's called a PSA. You take it. You get a level. It saved my life, and it, and it might save yours. If you're 40 years or older, make sure you take the test. If you're not 40 years old, tell a cousin, an uncle, a relative, or someone. It's really important, guys. Everybody's wearing pink for the rib, you know, ribbons for the women. 
Nobody's wearing shit for you guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Get the test, or you're going to find out you're in deep trouble, or some relative is in deep trouble, and it's only a blood test. And then the only other public service I want to say, because it's kind of close to my own home, we got to fight drugs. We got to fight alcohol abuse. We got to fight drug abuse in our kids. They died needlessly on the streets. We got to stop steroids in boxing. We got to stop drugs in the schools. We got to stop bullying in the schools. We need really to better get along and take care of everyone else. I thank you for indulging me. Well, I'd like to speak for about the next 30 hours on the guy to my left. Um, first, I want to introduce someone to you who is in line to fight Chad Dawson, and he doesn't even know it. And his name is Jean Pascal. Stand up, Jean, so we all can see you and remember you. He's used to that because we got the same greeting in Canada, so I thank you for letting him feel at home. Um, Winky had a great camp. There was a lot to be made out of him changing trainers to a new trainer. And John Scully, the gentleman that you see to his left, is not a new trainer. Where everybody was confused, it's actually an old trainer. It's someone that knew Chad, had trained Chad, and Chad was very, very comfortable with. So the story, so you all get it right, with Emmanuel Stewart, is Emmanuel didn't want to go to Pennsylvania to camp, Chad didn't want to go to Detroit, and therefore we had to get a new trainer. That's all, that's the whole story. There's nothing more to it. He had a great camp. He had Axel back in his camp and, and Raphael, and, and John was just a, a blessing in disguise that, that Chad made. The other addition we made was Winky Wright. I have to give credit to my son Jared who called me and said, Dad, we got to get Winky Wright in camp with Chad. And it's one of the better moves we, we made because they, they, it was cohesive. You never know if, when you bring different people in if you're going to get an abrasive relationship and everything's going to go haywire and sour on you. But I can tell you that the fight actually went according to the game plan. I'm going to let Scully come up and, and talk for a moment. But it was to keep Hopkins on the outside with the jab. He knew he would bull rush him. Never, I don't think that they were expecting it in the first round like that. And I can tell you that Chad was truly angry in the ring when Hopkins failed to want to fight so I'm going to tell you what he said, because he may not want to repeat it just the way he said it. Give me pencils there. Hopkins, you're a pussy. You're a pussy, Hopkins. Do you hear me? You're a pussy. You ain't a gangster. Because Hopkins kept saying he was a gangster. You ain't a gangster, Hopkins. Because you know why? A gangster would get up and fight. You ain't a gangster. Chad, Chad, Chad is really a great kid and, and soft-spoken, whatever, and I knew he'd never come up and say that or talk that way. So I wanted you to know exactly what happened. But I'm going to call John Scully up because in, in a lot of ways, I, I know how much Chad had faith in John because when I went to camp, he said to me, I said, how you doing with Scully? How do you feel? He said, man, um, I listen to everything he says. If he tells me to go out and hit Hopkins with my elbow in the chest, that's what I'm going to do. So I knew that, that Scully had his attention. I knew he was telling him all the right things. So, John, it's a great night for you. And I don't know where your wife is in here. John Scully. Thank you. Um, what can I say? I mean... Uh, Chad did a great job. He boxed good. I mean, for what it's worth, it, it doesn't mean much, but uh, we were clearly up 2 nothing. We, we won both the, the first two rounds um, kind of easily. And if anyone, keep, this is the most important thing I'll say, if anyone on this planet says that was a boring fight, 
it was certainly Bernard Hopkins fault it, Chad pressed the fight nobody thought Chad would be able to walk him down Bernard from my view did nothing he, he, you know and I think people are starting to see that people say he's old school and all that you know and I, I kind of I don't agree necessarily you know Georgie Benton was old school Archie Moore was old school Ezra Charles I mean they didn't run away and, and literally <laughs> limit the action so that nothing happened that uh, that excuse me that is not old school. That's just if if that was a four round fight, if people watch it go, oh, that was Hopkins. He, he did great. He was he was being cagey. If that was a four round fight in New York City against two kids from New York, you know what they would say? That kid doesn't want to fight. He should quit. He should never box again. He, should, he doesn't have the heart. He doesn't have the spirit to fight. So Chad Dawson, people said this and that, and Chad's not a, a fighter. And Chad walked him down. Pay attention. He walked him down. Who, of course, he's a champion. I mean, he walked him down. He, the only one trying to make a fight was Chad Dawson. So anyone that says Chad is boring, that's you know he should, he should you know take tonight. Tonight he was not boring. He made the fight. Any any action that happened was because of Chad Dawson. And I hope everyone writes that. And, and I hope everyone saw that. And don't say that Hopkins was cagey. And I mean, how many? But I don't know what the punch that was. I don't know how many he threw, but he, he didn't throw that many. I know that much. So. Um, all right, he threw his, and I told the referee yesterday, I said, please, I said, look at this guy, he throws, when he fought Antonio Tarver, a similar guy as Chad, stature-wise, his, his biggest combination was jab, right hand, headbutt, and literally, I'm not, I'm not being funny, I'm not being, you know, being comical, jab, right hand, the top of his head, the referee in that fight did nothing, and I couldn't let that happen to Chad, he get a headbutt, he get a cut, when uh, he, he, the referee assured me he wouldn't allow that, which the fight didn't go along, long enough to see what would happen, but... Hopkins wasted no time. Halfway through the first round, you watch the replay. Jab right hand, head top of his head. He tried to hit Chad with it. So, um, again, give this man credit. He, he came to fight. And uh, it, nothing that happened in that fight uh, negative was his fault. So, thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Chad's wife. Crystal, stand up. And all the other women, stood up. Because she and I took our real booing in Canada. So it's, it's good to be here with fans that love us. And then two fighters that I just recently signed, the Dawson Kids, Prince and Chance, in the middle. And then one other good service message. There's a good friend of mine sitting here that just realized where he is, Bob Shapiro, the famous attorney. He's got a, a foundation called the Brett Shapiro Foundation for, for Drugs. So if you got a couple extra shekels or dollars in your pocket, it's a great worthy cause, and he's a great, great fight fan. I know he trains, and I'm glad that you were here. I'm glad you were sitting on the right side. So let me tell you, Richard Schaefer can say he spoke to Jose Suleiman, Mauricio Suleiman, the 800 board members of the WBC, the California Commission. This man is champion. Yeah. Period. Yeah. End of story. So I want to bring up the WBC world champion, and you got your ring belt back because they came over to me and they asked for the address. Yeah. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Bad Chad Dawson. Yeah. First off, I want to I want to thank my family who came out to support me, of all my fans from New Haven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you, even if you're not from New Haven, if you came out to support me, I want to thank you for coming out. Um, I want to thank the WBC for ascension in the fight. And uh, I want to thank Bernard for making an easy night for me. <laughs> I mean, I put in a, we put in me and Scully, Winky, my brother, my man G-Man. We put in a lot of work for this fight, man. I, I, I did my eight weeks. I trained my butt off for this fight because this is a fight I've been wanting for the last three years. And this goes to show you why the last three years Bernard Hawkins has been ducking me. Yep. He didn't want a piece of me. I lost right. to Pascal, which was kind of controversial with a headbutt. Pascal was out on his feet. He know that. Right. Yeah, you say it all you want, but you know you was about to be done. Yeah. You know yeah. 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 I'm going to finish you off. I'm going to finish you off in the rematch. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm sorry for the um, but, when was, 
You lost to a 46 year old man, brother, twice. Twice. You lost to a 46 year old man twice. 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 You was out on your feet, brother. You was out on your feet. You got lucky. Sit down, man. Sit down. You got lucky. Sit down with your tight pants. Sit down. You got lucky. Sit down. 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 Sit down with your tight jeans. Come on, man. Anyway. Anyway. Exactly. This time, this time we're going to do it in the U.S. Do it over here too. Let's see what happens. East Coast! Anyway, I train, I train eight hard weeks for this fight. I'm, I'm just happy to, I'm, I'm happy I got my title back. I'm back on top. Back on top. And I want to thank you all for being here. Like I said, thank my mother. My new family I just met today, Nana, Curtis and Sienna back there, Smooth, Scott X, Tether, Nicole. I see everybody, all my family out here. I came here, I came, I came here to fight tonight. I don't know what Bernard thought he was going to do. But I knew, I knew in the way in yesterday Bernard did not want to fight. He said he was a gangster. I'm not a gangster. Ain't no gangsters in Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> I'm from New Haven. New Haven, baby. I see you over here. We from New Haven. All my New Haven people that came out to support me. Thank you. I'm happy. I'm ready to get back to work. Let's go. You already know. I know we're going to be able to make the Pascal fight because he's on the show and his promoter is standing right there. So he knows he knows that his fighter is next on the on the hit list. So he, he doesn't have to he doesn't have to stand up and he we, we know where he is and we're we're going to find him. It's not going to be a, a problem. Um, I'm looking for one individual in this room and I can't see him. Me. But at the end at the end. Be careful, my wife is there. <laughs> at, at the end, at the end of the weigh-in on yesterday, this dude met me at the back door and just gave me lip, lots of lip. How Hopkins is going to whip Dawson's ass? So I said, I'll buy you a dinner wherever you want in this town, no matter how much money it is. And when Dawson wins, I just want you to say I was wrong. Now, I want you to know, while I was sitting there, before Dawson walked in the ring, he walked over to me from behind in the crowd. He said, I'm here, brother. Remember exactly where I am. Now, where's my brother? I don't see him. No, no, and you were there. There's my witness. That was my, my witness. I just was going to actually bring him up to say he was sorry to Dawson for thinking Hopkins could whip his ass. But let us let us go right to the questions. Is Winky here too? Yes, he's in the back over there by that counter. See? Winky! 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 Another fighter that threw me over for Golden Boy. But he'll tell you he loves me. I'm going to let him just say a couple words and then we'll let you ask all the questions you want. You got one minute, Winky. <laughs> First of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Chad and uh, Gary Shaw for letting me come in uh, Chad uh, camp and uh, enjoy watching the champ train hard, get himself ready. He was prepared. Everybody, you know, you want to cry about, he, he leaned over and shoved Bernard off of him. Bernard is one of the dirtiest fighters in boxing. But now will hit you low, but now will headbutt you. He would do what it takes to win. But this man did not push Bernard down. He didn't lift Bernard up and slam Bernard down. He simply pumped them off. If anybody watch boxing, that's normal in boxing. Bernard quit. Point blank. He quit, and that's what he didn't want to fight Chad Dawson. So I just want to give the champ all the props, man. I came to camp just to have fun with him and, you know, give him a little insight and, you know, Scully had Scully had his whole team and the champ did what he had to do to win and uh, I'm glad I was there to win. Yeah. Thank you. The last person I want to say thank you to, and I don't see him, is Herman Woodard. Herman is the attorney and advisor to Chad. 
You know what? You know what makes this guy special? Exactly what you see. You don't see him. No, I, I mean that. I, I no, I mean that. There are people that try to jump in front of the fighter and be the guy and whatever. And if there's anything that I can say about Herman Woodard, he's anything but that. He's become a real good friend of mine. We communicate. The team has never been happier. And I told everybody all along, I've never seen Chad Dawson happier than I saw him in this training camp. So I'd just like to say thank you, Herman, to you. You are special. I want to say something. Um, before I got with Herman Woodard, I mean, I was kind of, I was kind of lost out there. You know, I, mean, I was dealing with a, 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 a bad trainer, I mean, a bad manager. I mean, Herman came on board and made everything smooth for me. He's a great lawyer slash advisor. He does a lot of work, a lot of things people don't see. Like you don't see him, you don't even know he's here because he's so quiet. But I'm gonna get him up here to say a couple of words because people need, to, nah, people need to see his face and get to know him and know because he's gonna be around for a long time. There you go. There you go. Dr. Berman, I see you back there too. You know, I always tell people, somebody called and asked me a question about Jed, and what I tell them is his boxing skills are very obvious, right? I mean, he's a phenomenal boxer. But what people don't see is the kind of person that Chad is. Chad is about his family and his kids. And you can only box for a short period of time. But what matters in life is what kind of human being you are. So he was world champion for me before tonight. But now he's a boxing world champion again. And this is a quality man with quality talent and a beautiful family. Thank you. He said, he speaks so quickly, he said a lot of beautiful things about me. You probably didn't catch it. But I want to thank you. I mean, it was beautiful. All right. For the press, only, whatever questions you have, shoot. Oh, do we have these mics on, we have the AV guys? Thank you. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm not satisfied at all. I mean, I didn't get to show the hard work we put in the camp. I didn't get to show none of that. So I'm not, no, nah, it's not my good performance, but I tell you what, I'll be back in the gym and hopefully we can make this pass out fight as soon as possible. I didn't break a sweat tonight, so ready to go. Where's Mark Taff and Kerry Davis? We need your money. Hey, it is what it is. I mean, you know, Bernard, Bernard wasn't going to be able to keep up that pace. He wasn't going to be able to keep running that old legs. I mean, those, I think it's too many. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bernard wasn't going to be able to keep running that old legs. I mean, those, I think it's too many. Now I punched the whole first two rounds, so he wasn't going to be able to keep up the pace. I was going to keep stalking him, and eventually I was going to start dropping the left hand on him. He knew that. So when I pushed him up, I think he, I think he was looking for a way out of the fight before the fight even started. So I mean, he's old, he's flabby. Yep. He, he knows, he knows, he knows for a fact, for the last three years, he's been ducking me. Then he went and fought this guy right here after I had him out in the 11th round. He knew he could beat this guy. He wasn't sure about me. <laughs> he jumped. I, ch I gave him the shoulder. Everything else was just for him. It was ice on the cake. So he, he saw he saw a way out of the fight. I don't know if he thought I, if they would disqualify me or whatever, but I'm the new champion now. Yep. Yeah, because I wanted to fight. I wanted to fight. I really wanted to fight. I wanted to show everybody the eight weeks of a training camp, everything we put in, everything me and Scully worked on. Everything me and Wiggy, everything Wiggy told me he was going to do, he did tonight. In the first two rounds, he had butted me twice in the first round. He was looking for a way out. Yeah, everything, if he might have laid, raised me on the top of my head or something, when he pushing me down or something like that, but no, he had no power. No power on his punches. Nothing. And he knew that. He was going to drown. 
Um, not necessarily. I mean, I I, uh, I thought that the jab would create a lot of problems for him. I thought he would he would hold back and uh, you know and not be able to get by the jab. Actually, in the dressing room, I said to Chad, when your jab is on 100 percent, he can't get by, and uh, that right. that's exactly the way it went. I'd like to introduce you first to George Dodd. George, I don't know if you were, he's the head of the commission here in California. Thanks, Gary. I don't, I don't know if you, were, I don't know if you were here when Richard Schaefer was saying how you and your commission suck, but I think you guys are great. So, just want you to know that, just so you have all the background. Any other questions? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's that? One time. Chad, I wanted to know yesterday that you said that uh, yesterday that you knew that you didn't want to fight you and that you were scared. But what is it that you saw that made you think that? Oh man, just a lot of things. You showed me a lot of things. The last, the last week since we've been here, I mean, you know, people try to get me riled up and get me to talk more, Chad, but that's not me. That's not what I do. I'm a quiet man. So, you know, in the press conference yesterday, he started screaming. I mean, he, he knew he couldn't get under my skin, so he tried to say anything. And when you start screaming out, I'm a gangster, you ain't a gangster, you know gangsters in Connecticut. Come on, man, that, that goes to show you right there. This guy's scared. I mean, I looked at his body after the weigh-in, man, and it was just, I knew it was over. I knew it. He knew he seen me, he seen my body, and it was no comparison. He walked into the rain with that, he needed to start wearing that mask first, though, because it's not an execution. He's not executing for two rounds. He found a way out, and that's what he did. Chad, when you realized he wasn't going to get back out, did uh, it ever cross your mind that you know he would probably uh, end up in an old contest or you know, possibly oh. qualified? Did that ever go through your mind? I, you know what? You know what was going through my mind? I mean, just please get up. Please get up so we can finish the fight. Don't throw it. Don't 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 end it all like this. Cause I put in. I really put in. I really put in the work for this fight. I really did. I mean, I haven't put in work. I trained four weeks for this guy right here. Honestly, four weeks. For he's a four round fighter. I trained four weeks for this dude right here. I trained five weeks for Diaki. So that goes to show you what I got in my tank and what I could do. By the way, just four I want weeks. to clarify. I want to clarify. How, would you, how long you trained? Three months? I want to clarify something because I'm a former member of the New Jersey Boxing Commission. He did not knocked out this time. He did not throw Hopkins down. He's going to get knocked out this time. Pascal. He's going to get knocked out this time. Don't make me get you convicted. Um, I'm a former member of the New Jersey Commission. He did not take his hands and throw Hopkins off him. He did not foul Hopkins at all. Hopkins got on his back. And he rolled over and Hopkins went off. The answer is what we said all along. Hopkins did not come to fight tonight. He saw an easy way out and he took it. Next question. Are you pressed? Um, how would, uh, Chad, this uh, question is for Chad. Uh, how would you have felt if the tables were turned and you were in uh, the position and you actually were uh, pushed over on the ground? Whether it was he wasn't pushed over. No, I'm just saying whether it was intentional or not. If you think he was standing up when he was on the ground. Look at the replay. He fell on his back. He fell on his back. Chad, where'd he get up? Chad. Next question. Question for Chad and John. Uh, in the pre-fight instructions in the dressing room, did they go over the rules about if a fighter is injured, uh, but not from a foul, that it'll be ruled a TKO? Were they clear with you guys? Did it seem like the other camp? No, the they, rules they were a bit in the dark about it. No, the, what we were concerned about in the dressing room when the referee came in to give his instructions, exactly what you saw in the first round. Hopkins charging with his head, using his head. That's all we were concerned about. I said it at the uh, after the weigh-in at the rules meeting in, in Hollywood, and everybody heard me clearly. So I'm just curious because the rules are always different. The rules aren't different. The, the, the rules are the same. I'm not criticizing you. I'm trying to find out if Hopkins is going for a new contest. Well, I don't. You got to go ask Hopkins what was in his mind when it, when he did that. I, I he came to fight. I can tell you that he came to fight. He's disappointed. He's disappointed. He came to show the fans and all the critics that he's here and who he is and what his skills are. Unfortunately, he didn't get the opportunity to show it. Uh, Gary, in, in alluding to uh, getting a uh, match with John, John Pascal right away, and and Chad also stating the, the unsatisfactory unsatisfaction in the Hopkins bout. Does that mean you're not interested in giving him a rematch? Giving who Hopkins? Yes. Probably. I have to speak to Chad and the team. 
but we have to get the exact time that we chased Hopkins around the world, and we want to re probably want to return the favor. I think this young man, luckily enough, is going to get another payday because because Chad wants to show that he is the best light heavyweight in the world, and Pascal is on his drawing board. And as soon as he called Hopkins a pussy, he turned to me and said, "I want Pascal next." So. Pascal, if the money's right, you're next, buddy. You don't even have to get up and say anything. You're next. Where, where would that fight take place? I, I, can't, I can't tell you. You know, first I gotta go on the HBO floor and shake them down. Mohammed Mubarak, Chad, Los Angeles Central. My question is once you settle the score with Pascal, Consider a fight with Tavares Cloud, the IBF fight that way down. Like I said, I'm, I'm ready for anybody. I, I take uh, Pascal, who's ever, just line him up, I'm knock him down. Trust me. There you go. I never, I never, I, first of all, I've never done any fighter in my life. I went to right. Canada and fought this dude over here, when I didn't even have to, and I didn't. And I went back a second time. But I go to show I fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. Is it? For the rematch with Pascal, is it crucial that it be U.S.-based, or are you willing to go back? We again? will. We will sit down. I'll tell you exactly how it works. First, I will talk to Herman. Herman is the conduit to Chad and his family. That will make the decision. I will put all our options on the table. If we go to somewhere in Canada, we're going to get X and we're going to earn X. If we go in the United States, we're going to get Y and earn Y. What do you want to do? For me. It's all the same. I have the best light heavyweight in the world. Wherever wherever we go, I believe we're going to go out victorious. I have a much different relationship with the Canadian Commission today than I did before that fight. But that fight will be made strictly by Chad and his family, and I will execute that decision. Hey, Chad, I wanted to ask you, how much do you feel that Bernard has left, uh, given the fact that it wasn't much time to see <coughs> How much do you think he has left now? Yeah, nothing when you beat this guy twice. Yeah, nothing. Honest, I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. Nothing. Yes. Who are the most famous in 1990? Hundred percent. Truthfully, I was trying to figure out in my mind when that was, and then. You know, but I thank you as a historian. Yeah, same thing tonight. Same thing tonight. They, just a, an instant replay, just years later. Yeah, uh, Chad. Chad, after things are cleaned out at 75, do you, could, would you consider maybe going down at a catchweight, fighting the Super 6 winner at 72, 71? Are you going to stay at 75? I mean, I'm not. Honestly, I'm not interested in the catchweight. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure those guys are coming up to light heavyweight soon, so... And I'm just stay there. But you consider fighting one of those guys when they clean out 68 if they yeah, come if up? Yeah, if they'll, they'll come up. If Bootay will come up or okay. Ward will come up or any of them will come up, then they'll then fight him. Chad's never ducked anybody. There's, there's not a fighter. The only fight that we turned down is I didn't want to go to Romania to fight the Akino. You know, I, I know I know how to count. At least I learned that in school. At least. <laughs> you know, so there was not a chance we were going to Romania. The question is, will Chad be more aggressive in fights going forward? Yes, I mean, it's not, like, it's not in my nature to be aggressive. You know, I'm more of a laid back, slick boxer type. But, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling with a lot of these guys. A lot, I'm struggling with a lot of people think. But now I figured that out tonight. And, uh, I mean, going forward, me and